let's be honest, footballers are not great singers. But the music of football, specifically AFL, is almost certainly among the most widely recognised and popular pieces of music in all of Australia. These songs are heard every single year, or at least underneath the Barassi line which divides football allegiance in Australia. So it might be a little surprising to find out that they're actually rarely original. Yeah! A club like the Sydney Swans shares its musical anthem with dozens of sports clubs around the world because it's actually the college fight song in America for the University of Notre Dame, written in 1905. The explanation here lies in that date, 1905. Most AFL clubs were founded in Victoria in the 1800s, but around the turn of the century, clubs realised they wanted a song to mark each victory and help define the club's identity. And so, these turn of the century sportsmen turned to the popular music of their time, the music hall, the marching band, and Tin Pan Alley. The oldest AFL tune still in use is Collingwood's, which borrows the tune of Goodbye Dolly Gray, a music hall number from the time. I have come to say goodbye Dolly Gray. Goodbye Dolly Gray was written during the Spanish-American War and then went on to become a popular tune for soldiers during the Boer War. Patriotic tunes are one of the most popular resources for AFL club tunes. Melbourne, Hawthorne and Brisbane all use songs about national pride as their themes. But beyond that, things get a little bit weird. Richmond uses a famous Siegfeld Follies song from 1912. Which was kind of like the American or Australian idol of its day, so that makes sense. But Geelong uses the famous Toreador song from Bizet's Carmen, but lowers the melody by a third for reasons that I've never been able to figure out. Why? We are Geelong, the greatest team of all. We are Geelong, we're always on the ball. And Fremantle started out with a grim melody based on the well known Russian folk tune, The Song of the Volga Boatmen. <laughs> Worst of all, Carlton borrowed their melody from Lily of Laguna, a pop tune from the 1930s deliberately written in a musical style meant to mock black people and frequently performed in blackface. The song is so racist that just a decade after Carlton selected it as their anthem, the lyrics to the original were rewritten to make it a bland song about love. That's pretty weird, Carlton. <laughs> Of course, new clubs have come into the AFL and brought new songs with them. As late as 1992, the Adelaide Crows were following the same model and adopted the US Marines hymn as their tune. But other clubs have tried to go original, with mixed results. We're the Eagles, the West Coast team. Sorry West Coast, but plodding, unexciting pub rock does not make for a good AFL song. The chorus is so uneventful that I feel like I could have a micro sleep while singing and still make it to the end of the first phrase. We're flying high. There's really only one candidate for a good, contemporary and original AFL song. Well, there's a big, big sound from the west of the town. And that's Greater Western Sydney's, written in 2012 by the Cat Empire's Harry Angus. It's the only AFL song in a minor key for a start, and it's also the only one that modulates up to major for the uplifting chorus. It doesn't underestimate the crowd's ability to sing along with good music, but more importantly, it follows the style of the 19th century pop music that defines what an AFL tune is. It's exciting, it's definitely catchy, and probably most important of all, it's still screamable after a hard-fought match by, let's face it, some pretty talentless singers. Yeah!